All right, this is a natural response of an RL circuit. So we have a 120 volt source. Then we have this three ohm resistor. We have a 30 ohm resistor. We have a six ohm resistor. And uh, then there's a switch that opens at T equals zero and that connected to a uh, eight millihenry inductor and a two ohm resistor. So what's gonna happen is the left side of the circuit is the energizing part of the circuit. It's gonna um, be connected to this inductor here and it's gonna energize the inductor with a current. Then the circuit's gonna open and the inductor will be connected to the only to this two ohm resistor. So it'll start to discharge and the um, energy in the inductor will be discharged to the, to the resistor and turned into heat. So we want to find I at zero. So I is this current through the inductor. We wanna find the initial energy in the inductor or W sub L at zero. We wanna find tau, the time constant, and we want to find I as function of T. And then we want to find the percent of W to R at 5 milliseconds. All right, so the first thing to do is figure out what the initial current in this thing is. So for that, we need to draw the circuit at T much, much less than zero. So because we want to make sure that the inductor has had time to stabilize to a constant current. So the three ohm is there, the 30 ohm is there, the six ohm is there. So when the circuit's been, or the switch has been closed for a long time, this inductor appears as a, as a wire, okay? Because it has a constant current in it at, at t, if the switch has been closed for a long, long time, which we indicate by saying t is much, much less than zero, then the um, current will be constant. And because it's constant, the voltage will be zero. So it's essentially a wire acting like a wire. So if that's the case, then the resistor is just still there. It has no effect in it because the voltage across it is zero. The voltage across the inductor and the uh, this two ohm resistor that's in parallel is zero. So it's like, this thing is shorted out and it has no effect on the circuit. All right, so there's lots of ways that we could solve this. We could use mesh current and get the current in here. That, that would be pretty direct, but just to show you some other tricks, um, we what we could do is we could realize that uh, if it, that there's some voltage across this, this AB, turn, um, AB nodes at steady state. So, if we knew this voltage, then by Ohm's law, we could figure the current being that this voltage V pushes through the six ohm branch, which is the branch that the inductor's on, right? So if so, we we could if we knew this V, we could find this I through here. So let's find the V first. So here's another trick: if you realize the six and the thirty are in parallel, then you could combine those and you get um, you get five ohms. So we could redraw the circuit with this simplification in there. So A and B are still here, but we can we can s simplify the 30 and the six ohm resistors, which are both between a, B, right? The 30 and the 6 are in parallel between A and B. So we've replaced the 30 and the 6 with a 5 ohm between A and B. So now we could just use voltage division to find the V. So V is going to be this 120 volt split across the, the, uh, those two brand, those two pieces, these, uh, the 3 and the 5, and we want the 5 ohm 
or the five ohm, uh, the voltage across the five ohm. So that's the numerator. That works out to be 75 volts. So there's uh, the remaining voltages across here. So some voltage is dropped across here. Then the 75 is dropped across AB. So so then we have we know the voltage across AB. It's 75 volts. And AB also exists up here. So there's 75 volts across this 30 ohm resistor. That same 75 volts is, is across this 6 ohm resistor. It's the same 75 volts. So that's kind of the point of doing this is just to reinforce some parallels, um, you know, simplification concepts. What stays the same? What's different? In this case, the voltage stays the same These after this transform here. So we can apply this V across across the the six ohm and get the current in here. So if V is is high on A and low on B, then it's going to push the some current this way. And what is that current? It's it's minus I is what it is. So there's going to be a minus sign floating around here. But uh, but uh, by Ohm's law, okay, at the six ohm resistor in this first circuit, really. It um, I is gonna I uh, we're solving at at up to you know way back before zero and up to zero so we'll just call it I at zero it's gonna be you know it's gonna be negative seventy five over six the negative sign comes from the fact that we know a seventy five volt voltage with this polarity is gonna push a current this away. The current's actually beginning to going to be going this way, but our reference i is opposite that, so we need to insert this negative sign. So this this turns out to be uh, minus twelve point five amps. So that's our first answer. All right. Then um, the next thing we need to do is we could do is find the initial energy in the inductor at zero. So We, our formula for energy in inductor is one half Li squared, and here we want the energy at zero, which is corresponds to the, um, the the current at zero. So this is going to be one half um, point zero zero eight eight millihenries, and we have minus twelve point five amps. And because it's energy, we're squaring it, and so we're going to get a positive energy, which you know we'll always get a positive energy. So this is going to be six hundred and twenty five millijoules. That's our second answer. All right, then we want to find uh, what is tau. So tau is L by R, and so we need to draw the you need to draw the circuit at uh, you know at at t greater than zero. At t greater than zero, the circuit looks like this. It's just an inductor in in um, driving you know a Two ohm resistor, and I is going that away. So R for the for this tau this time constant tau R is just the equivalent resistance seen by the inductor. In this case, it's just a single resistor. So tau is tau is is just going to be um, L by R. It's going to be um, 0.008 over. Um, over two, it's going to be four milliseconds. That's tau has units of time, four milliseconds, the quantity in this case. So we have everything we need to, to find I of t now. So we have a formula for I of t. It's uh, it's one half. No, it's uh, it's I I sub zero e to the minus t by tau. That's our formula for for I of t, and uh, we have all of these. We have I sub I sub zero is the initial current, which in this case is I little i at zero. So basically, little i at zero is the same as I big I sub zero. They're the same thing. So this is going to be minus twelve point five e to the minus t by point oh oh four, and then just flipping the 
0.004 up to the top just so that it looks pretty. It's going to be 12.5 e to the minus 250t. That's i of t. That's our next answer. Okay, then the last thing we want to know is the percent of the energy that's sent you know, to R at 5 milliseconds. So we have the initial energy. So this is the energy in the in the inductor at 625 milli, I'm sorry, at, at t equals zero, it's 625 millijoules. So if we had the energy at five milliseconds, we could, we could figure this out. So the energy at, in the inductor at five milliseconds is gonna be one half it's our, it's our one half Li squared uh, formula. This is L, 0 0.08, and, and I, it, um, so we need, we need um, this should be, sorry about that, this should be I have at um, five milliseconds squared. I at five milliseconds squared. It's not I squared times five, it's I of T, um, but solved at 0 0.05. We need we need this. So I we need the current in the inductor at 0 0.005. That's going to be just plug that into this thing up here. It's going to be minus 12 12.5 e to the minus 250.005. It's going to be um, it's going to be um, minus 3.58 amps. Plug that into here and square it. So it's going to be 1 half 0 0.008 minus 3.58 squared. Sorry about the messy notation, but it's just 1 half Li squared, but, but this is I at point, 0.005. Okay, so this is the energy in the inductor. This is W this is the energy in the inductor at 0 0.005. So it's going to be, this works out to 51.3 millijoules. So when the current was minus 12.5, we had 625 millijoules in the inductor. Now that the current is 3.58, we have 51.3 millijoules. So mo most of the energy, the energy in the inductor dropped from 625 to 51. It's like most of it, right? So it's look, it's like 90% or something. You can just tell by 625 and 51. It's, it's like 90%. So the the um, W um, the W remaining, you know, is or let's see, let's call it the W delivered. It is going to be W at uh, the inductor at zero minus W in the inductor at 0 0.005. It's the energy delivered between zero and 0 0.005 se seconds. It's going to be um, 625 minus 51.3. It's going to be um, 573.7 millijoules. So that's, that's, um, most of 625. How much of 625 is that? It's it's 91.8 percent. Okay, the energy started out at 625, ended up at at 51.3. That means that this much was sent or delivered to the resistor. Um, which is about 98%. The only, the only other thing that I should do that I haven't done is graph I of, of T. So this thing started out at minus 12.5 and then it decayed up like that. And then at 0 0.005, it had minus 3.58. Now, so this is a good problem, but we solved it. We solved energy using this energy formula. We solved it a couple of times, but and we the energy formula needs current, and so we had our current formula, and we solved that a couple of times. 
Another way to do it would be to get W of T, right? To get, to, like here I have I, I of T being graphed, but, you know, I don't have W of T. We, we could do that, but we'll do that in other problems. But this is still a good problem because keep in mind that energy in an inductor is associated with current. So if you have current, you almost have energy. You're just a few steps away from, from getting energy. Okay, one more thing I'd like to point out is that back way back up here is when we did this parallel com combination and got five, what if, what if this six ohm wasn't here? Okay, if the six ohm wasn't here, then this inductor at steady state would be shorting out the 30 ohm. There would be zero volts across, across A to B if the six ohm weren't there. You could, you could still, you could still get the current through here. It would take all of the current. It would take all of the current coming out of, out of A because it's, the, it's shorting out the 30 ohm. So then if the six weren't there, then the 30 ohm would go away and you would just have, um, by Ohm's law, you just have one, 120 and 3 producing a, a current that would all go through the amp, through the uh, uh, inductor. So watch out for things like that. Uh, you got to think it through, and, and that's kind of how these problems are designed, I think. All right, great. Thank you.